Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sirens of the Sea. And we have just had a shocking twist to start us off and that is the death of Honey. Honey has passed away, our oldest female who was actually one of our best Honey Sweet singers. And the mother of many of the children that we have been having born into the tribe has just died of old age. I had no idea that Honey was old enough that we could actually even lose her through old age, but there she is, a pile of bones. So clearly, yes, she was old enough to die of old age, and I have no idea what we are going to do without little Honey now. She was one of our best nut collectors. We need food. We desperately need food. But she did leave behind a few children, including Takia here, who I think we might rename uh, after some sort of fish or one of the awesome names that you guys have actually left behind for our niche challenge. Uh, I'm thinking, Takir, your father is Canyon. Your brother, I think that he has some siblings. So his father is named Canyon. And then I do think that, uh, we'll, we'll get to the little guy that you just saw in a second here. He has a sister named Serena, and he does have another brother, I think, named Sandstone. But I think we're going to go ahead and give Takir the name of Blobfish, which is terrible. <laughs> Which is terrible, but his coloration looks kind of like a blobfish. I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna name him Blobfish. Uh, please forgive me, little guy. I know that you deserved a, a better name. In fact, actually, I have a better idea. I have a better idea. We're actually going to go ahead and I'm just going to give him the name of... Uh, we'll go with Russet because he is going to be released to be free and roaming around all of the island since he is a male who doesn't stick with the tribe. The males are just very independent. A lot of you guys are confused about that, but there are many animal species where the males do not stay once they reach maturity. Uh, elephants are actually similar that way too. And the females will be the only ones to stay in a group. So just think about like elephants. Um, there's other species where you might have one male in the group, but you don't have any other competing males or they travel in bachelor herds. So we're talking more along those lines of what our current nichelings and sirens of the sea are sort of emulating in their way of living out their biology. But Russet is going to be uh, free to travel with his father and his brother pretty soon. They might form a little bachelor herd and go do something else somewhere else. But the name Blobfish, I actually do want to still use. And I want to assign that to the newest little creature who has just been born into the tribe because he is actually the child of a rogue, which is just infuriating to the sirens here. That is very infuriating to Baka. She really wanted to have the child of a very healthy, strong male. And instead, she has ended up against her own will having this child and so she may not have a very compassionate heart to the little one but i do think that our lovely ismi back here is actually very concerned and very in love with little blobfish which is what we are going to name this nicheling so this is going to be blobfish actually uh given the name because baka is very upset but she did give him her b she has a name that begins with b too so she did acknowledge him a little bit there but he is actually going to be one of the Omegas of our tribe. Um, and I think we'll have to chase him away, maybe? I mean, he was born in our tribe and he is a male. But we, we'll keep him as an Omega for now. And I guess we'll have to just chase him away when he reaches maturity. And then be aggressive about not breeding with him or chasing him away from our territory. We'll have to see. We could chase him away and then one of the sirens could actually lure him back in. And we could keep him as an enraptured male. Because I don't know. He, he might be okay for breeding. He's not as bad genetically as I thought he would be. So we might just release him. But Blobfish has just been born. I'm sure he and Russet will get along great. And that does free Baka up to go ahead and have a healthy child with this very handsome Tuvan, who has so many of the water skills that were water traits that we really want. He has got webbed paw, he has got webbed hind legs, he has got fishing tail, and he's got some really lovely rare immunity genes. And actually, Isla is the first one pregnant with his child. But while they are over here talking about his handsome fishing tail and his ability to swim, we have the arrival of yet another little surprise. And by little surprise, I mean like literally a little surprise. There's a baby Barina. 
<laughs> There's a baby Berina! It's protected by an adult! The adult is right here! Oh my gosh! There's a lot of drama happening. There's just a lot going on lately. So now we need to defend ourselves from the Berina. We might have a friendly Berina we could possibly mate with to bring in some of their genes. That's not really what we want because we want these swimming genes instead. Who knows, maybe having a claw, maybe having the roar might be helpful for this group. We might actually have kind of our uh, secondary, our little pink servants might be really good to breed in some Berina traits so that they could actually help protect the tribe. That would be kind of interesting to see. So that's kind of like the, the second class citizens in our tribe because uh, they don't have the ability to sing and enrapture males. But we'll have to see where we go with that. We're kind of building an entire society this time. It's not like a family. It's not like a tight knit tribe where everybody is always helping each other out. This is much more like a hierarchy. And I think that's going to give us just a different way to play the challenge. So there's a mess. There's a mess. I don't even know where to begin. We're, we're also starving. There's a lot happening. I'm going to send little Sarina up here to grab some food. I'm going to let Kiara gather up this food. It is just a chaotic mess. Get away from my food. Sandstone. So here is Russet's older brother Sandstone actually coming by and stealing some of our berries, which we desperately need. And little Ismi over here desperately needs to help us out with getting some food. We do have to still like fight off like the the Berina though. So Baka has to step over here, aggressively fight off this Berina. Uh, Ismi, I don't think Ismi can really even help. Yeah, she can't help at all. So Ismi just has to like run away, like run dashing away from everything. Uh, it sounds like, are you eating all my fish? That is so rude, Sandstone. We needed those fish. Oh my gosh. So we might have to start chasing our brothers away more aggressively too, which is a bit of a pity. And then Tanuta here is kind of stuck in the sand. So we're trying to get him back up to our tribe where he might be of some use. So I can hear somebody trying to eat the fish and that's Sandstone down here. Those are our fish, Sandstone. All right, Isla, even though she's pregnant with the oh-so-important genetics, needs to try to defend the tribe. This Berina is still here. What a mess. I hope our sirens will survive so that we can have some beautiful mermaids. <gasps> Baka! Baka! Oh my gosh, no! Oh, that's so terrible! Oh, little Russet's gonna run over to try to help his auntie. We've got we've got this little guy. Blobfish can offer three food if we wanted to. Uh, oh my goodness, Russet's gonna have to go ahead and like help to heal up his auntie, and then she's going to have to grab the Berina food and then jump into this nest to have this baby because no sandstone. <laughs> Because we desperately need the food. This is so ridiculous. I can't believe this. Sarina, get over here and get some of the, the nuts. We desperately need somebody on nut collecting. And you guys are always laughing at me about my obsession with Cracker Jaw. It's for survival. It is for the sake of survival, my friends. And then Kiara, I guess she can jump over here to try to protect the baby. Ismi is dismayed because she doesn't know where to even begin at gathering up food to help the tribe. And they, they gave her like a home so she's going to do some exploring for berry bushes oh my goodness gracious this is just this has become quite the mess and then our enraptured tanuta here is going to be working his way back up to where the sirens are because he wants to be near their song he can go a little bit a little bit mad if he is not near be their beautiful song that they hum and sing to themselves and lately they've been singing the songs of war and battle and rage and i think that would send all of their enraptured into a rage to be very aggressive so let's go ahead and see what happens Whew. All right, our friendly Marina, uh, is he, like, how do we, we might want to offer him some food. I think Izmi might offer him some food because then we might be able to have her breed with him when he becomes older. And we just had a little girl, thank goodness. What kind of traits does she have? Anything useful. She's got recessive fishing tail and webbed hind legs. Unfortunately, she did inherit one deformed paw. We really need to prevent that from happening again. But I don't really have anything else we can put in. Uh, I guess I could put double runner's leg in. That's better than nothing, I suppose. Does she have any other traits that aren't very good? Uh, well, I also need to get their eyesight better. So, goodness gracious. 
just trying to work on the basics over here, it seems. But thankfully, the handsome fishing male is still in the area, so we might be able to get some more genes off of him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm going to have us... Oh my gosh, is that apple again? Apple, stop eating all of our stuff. We need that. Okay, hurry. No, can we not get that? Ah, Tanutha, why? Tanutha, why can you not do anything? That's why he's one of the enraptured, just meant to help us explore. Meanwhile, Isla, you eat that berry before your brother does. Blobfish, come over here. Uh, do we have anybody who could gather the berries? I'm going to let Blobfish come over here and defend our berries and maybe even destroy them so we can keep them. And then Serena is going to gather up. Don't mate with your brother, Serena. Or, like, your... Yeah, your brother. Uh, Serena, I'm going to have her... Let's see. Just get some food for now. We're kind of desperate on that. And Russet can come over and help out with the food situation. Um, and we'll go ahead. I'll let Ismi befriend. We'll give the friendly Barina the food. So I don't know if that when they grow up, if you don't befriend them, if they can actually turn aggressive towards you. So better to be safe than sorry early on, right? So there's that. Uh, who else has some moves? Kiara still needs to have her child. I think she is pregnant with a rogue's child, actually. Um, I'll have her move up here and gather up a little bit of food before all of the males start surrounding it again. Phew! Alright, where are we now? Okay, let's see. Alright, well, Russet has just become an adult. We'll go ahead and give him all of the blue icons so we note that he carries the Sirens of the Sea line. We're going to have Kiara actually chase him away. I'm going to actually preemptively eat a bunch of the berries off of there first. Uh, and then I guess I'll have Serena chase them away. So let me pop over here. Serena, you need to be an alpha because you are actually born of the sirens. And I need to change everybody who's born of the sirens gets blue tokens. So I need to remember that and be sure to change their tokens to blue. Blobfish is born of the sirens, but he was also like, well, I guess he was born of the sirens. And we're, he's not a wanderer we took in as like kind of second class. So we'll go ahead and give him the blue tokens, but he is going to be chased away when he becomes an adult. All right, I'm going to destroy that so we can claim the berries and then he can try to do a little digging. And then this adorable little girl, she was born. I'm going to find out who was her parents again. This awesome Tavon. We're going to think really great ocean related thoughts. <laughs> so Isla and Tavon had her and we're going to name her River and kind of cross all of our fingers and her, unfortunately, not the best pause, hoping that she might be able to get some really good water genes up and going as time goes on. All right, Tanuta, I'm gonna have Tanuta maybe jump over here, do a little bit of exploring. Isla, are you short-sighted? She sure enough is. So Tanuta as an enraptured male is actually her eyes. Uh, their uncle Apple is about to pass away and that guy won't get out of the nest. I'm just gonna make a new nest right here then. And then I'm going to have Kiara go ahead and have her rogue child. Oh, and now I need to chase away, unfortunately, have to chase away uh, our, our wonderful Russet. Oh, and look at this, Sandstone is wrestling with a really cool fish. I'm so envious of him. But we have to chase away our males because they have come of age and they are old enough that their their like hormones kick in and they just want to get out of here. They don't want to stick around because that's just not what they do like on a biology level in this particular tribe. All right, there we go. And it's like a little food. Phew. Okay. Thank goodness. We're still kind of hanging in there, but this has been a little bit rougher of a ride than I anticipated. All right, the friendly Barina has left. And actually, I'm kind of impressed with the child that Kiara has just had. I think he too, as a rogue male, um, if, I, I don't know, like we might want to try to enrapturing him, but yeah, because he can't really do anything, but does he have any useful genes? He does not, but he's very lovely looking. I kind of like him. I, I sort of want to name him like Coffee. <laughs> I don't know why. We're going to name him, uh, let's go with like Kove. There we go. That's what we're going to give him as his name. It's not from your guys' name list, just he's really cool looking. I actually have a soft spot for him. And we could breed with him or we could actually release him when he becomes an adult because he would become mature and leave the tribe. Or, and then we could enrapture him right away. So it would cost us five food, but we could do it 
it just to keep him around because he looks kind of cool actually. I kind of like him. Uh, all right, so we're gonna have little blob fish. Carry on, little one. Do we have any? I think there's like a berry bush way down here he could try to get. But I think he's do done a very good job of trying to kind of take care of his little family over here. And then River can help out with gathering up some of that food. Serena can actually work on getting more nuts to feed everybody. And then we just had another baby with Tavon who's getting older here. And we're going, oh yes, yes, we finally have our very first water gene, you guys. We have one webbed paw. I am so happy, Anna. What are we gonna name you, my dear? It's not like you can swim very well just yet, but you might be able to swim better than the others. So let me go down your guys' amazing list and we're going to see what to name this little one. Um, especially because her name is not very related to uh like her her body isn't quite related to being the proper body for a like swimming nicheling just yet so i think we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna name her garnet uh that's one of the names you guys have suggested and i love the idea that when we get our mermaids into the ocean they really are obsessed with gemstones and jewels and they really enjoy collecting them so we'll name her garnet there we go all right, so this is actually very exciting. Uh, let's see. So that's Isla having her children. That's Kiara over here. Who would be better? I think that Kiara would probably be better because she would have normal sighted hide babies. Uh, and then this guy, ING immunity. Yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty healthy. And Kiara, uh, we'll go ahead and let her actually mate with him. Uh, even if she doesn't have a baby right away just because the last child she has was a rogue child So I feel like it's only fair. She gets a chance She gets a shot at somebody who's not a rogue child. Also Isla was going for that that mole But he saw us coming so darn it. Maybe the bunny will come back into sight All right, and then Tanuta will go ahead and have him continue to explore these upper edges and run right into a rock and then Izmi will think quietly about that interesting berina that she gave the food to. And we'll, she'll think about uh, what will happen with that berina. All right, Kiara, we'll just wait. Uh, I'll gather up the food right here. And that bunny did not come back, unfortunately. Oh, and we ran back into another rock. Well, darn. Oh, there's a dead koi fish. We gotta collect that. Come along, my little ones, before somebody else gets it. Oh, that was the friendly berina. Well, good thing about the friendly berina is that he will actually attack uh, other berinas for us if they start messing with us. So actually, spending three food to keep him in uh, good graces with our tribe is quite wise actually. That might be something that Izmi as the servant class sort of has started to figure out uh, a way to protect all of her tribe that she really looks up to. I think she's enraptured by the songs that the sirens sing but just in a different way. Also the koi fish disappeared! No! I really wanted that! Fooey! All right, well River, what to have you do my dear? Uh, can we make River a little alpha? Because unfortunately we just lost Blobfish because he is aged up. All right, we cannot have her chase him away. Hey, River, quick, get the rest of those berries. Your uncle was being a, a bit of a brat and stealing them. Uh, and then we'll scooch River this way and we'll scooch over here. Wait, how did you, oh good, we already released him. All right, then we'll eat a berry and then Isla. I really hope she doesn't become unexpectedly pregnant with somebody that we don't want. Uh, oh, there's Russet. Russet's already visiting on this side again. Well, he might know where food is, so he might be worth following. Nope, that's just a rock. All right, and then we have little baby Garnet, and we need to protect her. I don't know if staying next to males who are not related to you actually will protect- Get out of my nest! The whole reason that I moved was so that you could get out of my nest and and instead Apple just climbed into our nest. It's like our, our brother wants to see what we're up to. I think Tanutha might be a little nervous to see the Berina, so he'll clear the area around there. But phew, I forget how hard it is to keep food in when we uh, split tribes like this and then also when our males stay a little bit too close. But that's another reason why it might be better to enrapture, say, Apple, our uncle, rather than leave him as a possible breeder so we can control him and get him to stop stealing our food. Oh, well, he's dead now, so it's a moot point, but you know what I mean, guys. All right, and the friendly Berina is still here, so I am going to have Ismi 
go ahead and I think she's fallen in love with the Berina, uh, which is something below what the sirens would do, of course. And we'll have Kiara step into the nest. We'll have River gather up these berries before her father steals them. And we will have little Kove, who I am really tempted to keep as an enraptured male. Like I said, he will stay over here. And uh, what will he do? He'll clear away that grass. And then maybe we can have him dig something up. Blobfish is on his way, just wandering. And Isla, should I have her go ahead? Maybe have another child. We are kind of getting a little bit low on Bibis. So we'll jump into the nest. There we go. All right, search, search. And then Garnet doesn't need to fight. We'll send Garnet over here, get, get some berries. There we go. Whew, we're gonna have to start working on unlocking some genes, guys. We've got a little bit of progress when it comes to those water genes, and now they're in some of our females for their future genetics, but how to actually bring them out is going to be a whole nother kettle of fish, and the fish are exactly what we are trying to go for, too. So maybe we can kind of perch some of our females around the lake, and they can start focusing maybe on coming back down towards this area, and we can search along the beaches but it seems like the waterways really attract a lot of the males and we might want to start enrapturing some of the males like blobfish for instance he could technically be an okay breeder but he doesn't have any of the swimming traits that we need and it would be more useful to have his powerful attack as a defender so I think we will actually um we'll actually try that out we have a little bit of a surplus of food we can kind of wiggle that with and he can always recoup that food by helping us be a good hunter and defender. So our little tribe is off to a bumpy start. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to start unlocking some of the genes pretty soon. I'm really hoping that we'll be able to snag. Uh, like toxic body is always going to be very difficult because it's so hard on all of you when I have to feed the nichelings, the toxic berry bushes, but it is something we have to do so that we can try to unlock those beautiful bright color coats. But we'll also work on unlocking more of the water bearing jeans next time. So I'll see you all then. Bye bye.